we are back with another episode of 15 Minutes at the Red Dot, a part of the Red Dot series. And I am here today with the legend himself, Mr. Keith Robinson. What's happening? How you doing, baby? I'm doing good. How are you? I am wonderful and I'm grateful oh. that you are in the building well, on I'm today. I'm grateful to be here. Like, I was just like, you know, you know, things happen, you get in line with people and I'm like, nah, for real? Like, Word. the Lord... <laughs> in the way that he works, I'm like, yeah, bring him on. Yes, I don't, I don't know what to say, but uh, we gonna make it happen. No doubt. Yes. Yeah, let's do it. But um, thank you so much again for coming. Yeah. Um, so tell me, where did you grow up? Where, where I grew, I grew up in Georgia and South Carolina. Oh, in South, South Carolina, really? Yeah. And how was that? Uh, how was that as far as like your creativity? In what ways did it inspire your creativity? I mean, in every way. I mm -hmm. mean, you know, my brother was a heavy influence in my life as far as creatively and musically. I was heavy into sports. Mm -hmm. uh, my mom was uh, into music. Um, what sports did you play? Basketball, football. Why you look like that? I'm, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> like <Why> you? <laughs> I think it was that juice. But uh, it was, yeah. it was uh, that's okay, because that's like a typical sport. The sport, it's yeah. these sports. It's either basketball or football, football yeah, right? Yeah, that's what I play. Basketball. Right. It's, it's heavy in the south, so. Oh, okay. Um, so yeah, my environment, you know, really um, influenced me. You know, I was mm -hmm. a heavy, big TV buff, so I love TV and mm -hmm. film. Mm -hmm. and, um, I think in the smaller cities, the fans go a little bit harder because you know when things come to us, we're more. Um, we're not as used to it. It's not as saturated mm -hmm. as growing up in a big city. Right. We're used to seeing, Musicians, so when people came yeah. through, we all we we, we honed on it. So, right, right. Um, I think that that was a big thing as far as it's a huge advantage. Yes, yeah. so yeah. it's a good thing. I mean, you, right, know, you always yeah. hear the newest songs in the smallest towns. Right, right, right. So um, I think you know I'm a product of that. Yeah, okay. that's like I feel like that's really beautiful uh, as far as like your your friends. I feel like they connect with you even more because of the reason, like. You know, you go to school with some of these people, and they're like, "Dude, he really made it!" Like, I'm, yeah. I'm a super fan. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I actually knew him at some point. Sure. Um, but with that said, uh, do you still have like, do you still uh, talk to your friends from like high school, middle school? A few of them. I really? Mean, you know, it's been a while. But mm. uh, you know, I think with Facebook, it's you know, oh, it's yeah. hard to get away from. You right. Know, oh yeah, so it's right there. Yeah. A lot of my classmates, you know, we don't may not necessarily communicate like that mm -hmm. but I can see their families they might like a picture or I might okay. like a picture so it's, yeah. I think social media keeps us all connected for I, better yeah. for worse right 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 so, uh, so some of them yeah I mean then I have those, some of my childhood best friends who you know I'll always be in contact with have you lost those. any friends because of your success um I would have to say yeah but I wouldn't know I couldn't say this person don't mess with me no more because of, yeah right. But I think that's just a natural progression. I mm -hmm. think you know anything mm -hmm. you're anytime you're doing something right. Um, Everybody is not going to be long. People come into your life for seasons. Mm -hmm. Right. So uh, I would have to say yes. Could I pinpoint them? Are they my arch rival or my nemesis? <laughs> no. no. Yeah. But no. It's, you don't that's, seem that's like life, the though. type of guy to start on enemies like that. I mean, you know. I, I don't think so either. Okay, I was like, what is he about I, I to say? <laughs> so, but you know, life, life is, life is what it is. So. Um. Uh, okay. Cool. So, <laughs> as far as music, right? Uh, yeah. I know that you're signed to Motown. I was. You were ago. signed. Long time ago. When when did that stop? Whew. Uh, it's been some years. Probably. Really? Was probably a little girl. You probably, you probably was a little baby. <laughs> don't 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 do right, that right, to right, me. Right. I'm, I'm I, I, grown I, now. No doubt, okay. You're grown, so. Thank you. Uh, no, it was a long time ago. <laughs> Starting off, I got a, we got a, when I was in college, I was in a, a group, same group, and we uh, we initially got a record deal. Wow. Uh, in Motown. That's uh, awesome. And, you know, it didn't last. We got out of the deal, and that's what really made us move from Georgia to Los Angeles was mm. to really try to get another record deal. Right, try to right. Sign. So right, right, right. That's what brought us out here. Amazing. So, who are you signed to now? I'm on song. I'm an independent artist. Oh, really? Yeah. Collecting all that money. I'm an indie. I'm Come an indie on. Cat. How is it harder being an independent artist? I think it has its pros and cons. I think it's harder because, well, I wouldn't say harder. I think the great thing about being independent is that you're independent. You make your own creative decisions. Right. Uh, and there's so many platforms to be heard. Mm -hmm. um, but you do still need that the machine 
you're always against the machine, mm -hmm. you're against mm -hmm. all the millions of other artists who are doing the same thing. So if you can find a way to separate yourself mm -hmm. and stay consistent in the marketplace, it's a great thing. Yeah. Uh, the great thing about being signed is that you have the machine behind you so right. they can push you through channels, they can pay, pay the marketing dollars mm -hmm. and really get you to a stage uh, where, you, where you're heard. I think the best route is to be independent long enough it's to long, where a, yeah. a major comes and they want to join in the party. Right. So it's great. at what point would you say is that timing to where you can sign? Like, do you have to have enough? Is it a fan base or music amount sold or what? I think it's a combination of things. I think once the fan base is there, mm -hmm. Uh, and once you can sit down at a table with a, a major label and, and it's not a thing where you have to have them, it's like if we can come to an agreement and it makes sense, mm -hmm. great. And if it doesn't, great, I'm still going to keep it moving. I right. think the power is in, in, your, in your connection with your fans mm -hmm. and, and the Definitely. people's support. So if you have that support, a lot of times um, it's really in your best interest to just do it yourself if you have the means. Right. That's right. what I would always tell somebody. But uh, you know, once you've got your support system, then you're great. I feel like... For you, it's just this is just my opinion. Okay. That it it's a little easier for you because you're already established. You would think that, but uh, no. What? Not, not, no, it's a, it's a grind. I know it's there's so many people like hitting you up on the ground like, hey, let me be your sponsor. Let me let me let me let me help you out. You know what? In a perfect world, that'd be great, but no. Come no. on. Nah. This is the thing, ridiculous. The thing is, I think what. Me, me being in TV and film has allowed me to um, maybe get into doors that may be a little bit tougher. But still, that being said, you still have to show and prove yourself in the same mm -hmm. different medium. So just because you, you have can, to prove yourself, yeah, just because you can juggle doesn't mean you can ride a bike. Which is kind of, which I know is kind of hard to believe. But yeah, yeah, I'm really yeah. mind blown right now because yeah. I mean, I thought yeah, it's you not. Did. It's it's still it's still a grind. You still have to garner your fans and even introducing. The fan base that I have garnered mm -hmm. to another side of me, which is the music, is still a, right. it's still an everyday. How is task. that for you? Do you feel like your fans feel kind of like betrayed because he's stepping back into the music? So no, maybe. not betrayed. I feel like people I, I, because the music I feel is good and people mm -hmm. love the music. I feel like oh yeah, it's a it's a self awareness thing. They don't feel okay. betrayed. It's just me opening opening them up to another side of me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Actually, the original side of me because I started right. The music, that's why so I said back. There's to no it. betrayal there. There's no. It's it's kind of now if you're an artist and you have more than one way to express yourself, mm -hmm. then by all means, you should Go do on that. Go and do it right. Yeah, you should do that. Right, right, right. Because right. uh, I feel like a lot of people talk, you know, their ish, and then they be like. Uh, they started off as an actor or something, and yeah. then they go into music or vice versa. Yeah. But uh, I mean, if you just like doing what you do, then do it. Yeah. Like you know about doing more than one thing. It's like you have a podcast, and then you have ten other things. Thing. Yeah. Yeah. So you know. so you know, so it's like you just gotta all the gifts that God gave you. You know, it's up to you to be able to utilize them as much as, as much as you can. You know what? To be honest, this whole week, cause I've been home alone, right, mm -hmm. and because like I was I already knew I was gonna do an interview with you mm -hmm. and I was like I just I just felt like singing so I just well go ahead oh no 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 we're oh, not no. doing that okay. no oh, no not. I'm just okay. saying uh, I'm just telling a story <laughs> honey nobody's singing right now and only only you and I know you're ready for that so ready for what singing you're gonna sing I'll sing with you you're gonna sing, sing with me though no yeah, you're gonna sing with me no I'm not doing that you're doing that. a duet I'm gonna be, like, ah. yeah, I'm gonna yeah. be breaking windows and whatnot yeah it's big Don't windows in here put your Put your glasses away. It's a lot of windows in here, so it's all good. <laughs> you made me forget what I was <laughs> But, um, okay, hold on. We're going to have to edit this. Beep boop. Beep boop. Beep boop. What the heck was I even talking about? What was I talking about? I don't know. Said See, now you don't even know. Oh, okay, let me go back. All right, so check it. So I knew that I was interviewing you, right? And I was like, yeah. cleaning up. Like Cinderella, just sing it. I was, to be honest, it was like Ariana Grande. I got Whitney I like Houston that. in there. Okay, cool. I you did. I will that. always love you. And I felt like me personally, I thought I would. I thought I did well. But I was going back to. That's, that's I remember all that going back to what you were saying about how we do so many things as an artist. Yes. I was like, I wouldn't be surprised if I got in, in a booth, sometime soon. Hi. You should just, do it. Just put a little tweak into the voice. You know? Hey, hey, singles are sold. I'm gonna have Miss Mother Wada. She gonna help me over there. She's she's fire. 
I believe. Yes, you got to check her out. But, um, but yes, as far as just doing so many things, do you feel like uh, at times you're pulled in like so many directions and is it hard for you to keep a balance of everything? Um, I don't think it's, I don't think so. I think mm. kind of, I think it kind of gives me balance mm. uh, to be able to have something else to kind of fall back on or revert to right. or kind of one, one feeds the other for me because I've always done it in my career. Mm. So, um, and I haven't been, you know, I, I, I'm a singer, songwriter, and I'm an actor, mm -hmm. I'm a content creator. So, I mean, they kind of go hand in hand. They're all kind of, one needs the other. You right. know what I mean? So, right. for me, it's kind of one function for me. So, I, yeah. I kind of, you know, if I'm, if I'm, if I'm on a set and I'm thinking about a song, if I'm writing or recording a song, then I'm thinking about how would it look visually. Right. So yeah. Um, I, I like being able to kind of express myself in both ways. That's amazing. Um, let's go back to your early career in singing, right? Mm -hmm. Who was your motivation? Um, I mean, you know, I love all the Motown. I love Stevie Wonder. I love mm. Donny Hathaway. I was a huge Jodeci fan still. Mm. Mm -hmm. You know, when I was in grade school, Jodeci was, was my, they were my idols. Big Boys to Men. That's all my life, right? Jodeci? You know, my, yeah, Diary of a Mad Band. You heard of that one? You heard of that one, Diary of a Mad Band? I mean, I, I feel like, okay, I'm going to tell you this. I probably have. Oh, that's okay. I just don't stop. You should check it out. You should check that out. I, is it? Is it it's one of known? the greatest R&B albums of all time. It's known, so Very I'm pretty. So. What's what song is on there? Um, Phoenix. Okay. What else? You heard Phoenix? <laughs> so it's me. You got me Phoenix. Uh, oh, I told y'all he was gonna sing. You heard that song before? I yeah. That's yeah. It. That, that's on the album. Oh, uh, see, that's when like the real love making was happening yeah, back that's then. That's probably how you got here. You probably got here on that album. <laughs> Thank you, Mom and Daddy. Ah, <laughs> Shut up. No doubt. You made a beast. That just came. <laughs> no doubt. Um, okay, so um, who were some uh, of the R and B singers that you're feeling today? Today? Yes. Um, I love her. Oh yeah. Um, her she's like my favorite. I love Chris. Um, I love uh, Lucky Day is dope. Mm. I like um, I like Daniel Caesar. He's dope. I mm. like uh, I mean, it's a lot of. I mean, you know, uh, who else? I like Miguel. Miguel is dope. Oh yeah, um, Do you like Bruno? I love Bruno. Oh yeah. I think Bruno is great for the game. So how do you feel about Anderson Pack then? Love them. Okay, yeah. Love them two together. I can't yeah, wait for that. Yeah, I, I know. think they're great for music. Yeah. Um, you know, I'm a fan first, so mm -hmm. it's a, I can find a song on almost any album. It's, it's hard for me to not listen to a whole album and say find at least one song that I can't find. Yeah, like, so. Right, right, so. right. It's always going to be a vibe. Yeah. Um, so what would you say is your personal favorite uh, era of music? Would it be the back say in the, the day? Oh, yeah. I, I, was, I had a feeling because I personally feel the same way. Yeah. Like the music today is cool, but a lot of it's like from back in the day and they just remake it yeah I mean I feel like the 90s whenever a new album came out it was an event and it was and, mm. the, and, the, and the record was always super dope right like it right. was always like Mary J. Blige got ready to drop an album and it was off the chain like Joe mm -hmm. and, mm -hmm. you know and you just go down the list I feel like the music was just, just better low key like I appreciate music today yes but like yeah. For some reason, that just it just made you want to cry sometimes, like, mm -hmm. or it just made you want to like grab your man or your woman and just yeah. be like, I just love you. You yeah, know what yeah, I mean? Yeah. But I don't really feel that too much today. I, feel you. I understand. You, yeah. got a whole, you got a whole soul. I do. Thanks yeah. to my grandpa, RIP. Love you so much. No doubt. Yes, but um, let's see. Uh, okay, if you had to work with somebody dead or alive, who would it be? Like that number one person. Hmm. Probably dead Michael Jackson, maybe, and then maybe um, alive, probably Pharrell. Pharrell? Yeah. Oh, yes, yes, yes. He's, I like me Pharrell. Yeah, he's dope. He's yeah, super dope. yeah. Super dope. Um, but if, I feel like everybody always goes for Michael. It's either a Michael or Prince, one of the two. Prince, um, I don't know how much, I mean, I love Prince. Mm -hmm. Um. I just wonder how the session would be. It might, it might, it, it would be more of a dictatorship. I had to do what he told me. Oh. 
I had to fall in line, which would be dope. I'm cool with it. He's right, definitely right, my top three, but right. my number one probably would be Michael. Yeah, if it was a more creative give and take okay, experience. Okay, gonna yeah. Okay. You feel what I'm saying? But I mean, either one of them, you can't, you can't miss. You can't. Oh gosh, I, I would, I would just really cried because I really thought that I was gonna meet Michael at some point in life, and yeah, that's what, that's probably why I cried. I was like, I'm, I'm gonna move back to LA. And I'm gonna make it. And I'm gonna meet Michael. That's all I want. That was it. Huh? That was it. Well, you got, you got, you got to LA. I made, <laughs> I made it back. <laughs> yes. Yeah, so. Um, after you moved to LA and uh, pursuing, pursuing, pursuing your career, uh, yeah. how was that like for you in the change in your environment? Um, you know, it was an adjustment because LA is such a unique city. You know, mm -hmm. from the south, so mm -hmm. it was an adjustment for sure. But I think it was a very, it was the best move of my life. Right. Kind of yeah. started my career officially. Right. Being in the mix. Because was it kind of home. overwhelming? Sorry to cut you off. Um. Somewhat, but I moved out here with two of my homies in the group, oh, so okay. I had someone to kind of, after the yeah. end of a crazy day in LA, I had two cats who came from my and I could kind of bounce right. off of. Right, right, right. So it was a lonely place because mm. you don't even know where to start. It's such a big spread out city, right. everybody's trying to do the same thing. Yeah, right. So it can be lonely in that way, but uh, you know, it takes, it takes, you gotta give LA about a year or two before mm. you can really figure out if this is for me or not. Yeah. And for me, it was like I had no plan B. So this so, is it. We're going to make it work. Yeah. And it worked. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, at what point uh, when uh, your career as an actor, when did that become serious? Well, my first job was a, I was a Power Ranger. That was my first job. Oh, yeah. So right. It was pretty early. I mean, I got a job pretty quickly when I got here. I was blessed. Uh, like six months in, I had a gig. You were the Green Ranger, right? Yeah. He's freaking cool. Ah. I didn't even know that I was watching The Great Ranger yeah. and it was you. Yeah, yeah. So that was that was Damn. my first job and that was cool. And that kind of really, you know, let me know that, you know, this might be a good good idea to, to stick around. I'm really trying to like hold in my dork side. It's okay. Like, <laughs> it it's okay. I'm just like, dude, like this is legendary right now. Like you guys um, have no idea. I'm like really excited. Yeah. <laughs> But that's awesome, though. And um, as far as like when you uh, get that call, it's like, hey, kid, you made it. Like, how does that feel? Sorry. I mean, it feels good to have a job. I mean, you know, I, was, I could pay my third of the rent. Right. You know, I could, you know. Right. I could afford more studio time, and that's really how I looked at it in, in that space. I didn't. I was. I was over. I was happy that I was actually doing something fun and making some money. Mm -hmm. and maybe I could turn it into something bigger than this right and that's pretty much the extent of it for me you mm -hmm. know it was kind of like just being happy that i had a job so mm -hmm. and i could call home and tell them that i'm good you know gotta worry about me i got a gig for me right so, I'm only good. so we okay uh, i'm all right so that, right. that's pretty much what it was for me it was just kind of reassurance yeah, yeah. so like uh after doing that right uh work doing the whole power rangers movement uh did you like, how did you feel as far as the fan wise? Like, were they like, oh my God. You know, I mean, the little kids were, I mean, mm -hmm. but you know, as adults, we don't, we not really dialed in. So it wasn't a lot of fandom when it came to that. No I adults? Think, There's like a whole group of Well, it adults. is, but you're not, they're not, uh, they're not in your space like that. Okay. You know, kind of, like, I didn't really meet the fans up close personal until years later when I did like oh. a, pop, like a Morphicon conference. Oh, uh, yeah, right, When they right, all right. come to the conference and right. kind of like Comic Con. Yeah. So, I mean, we did a couple of charity charity events or promotional mm -hmm. events where it'd be thousands of kids there and they were of course going crazy. But right. as far as the coolness as far as my and my among my peers, I mean we don't we don't we weren't really dialed in like that. I think now it's more of a cool tidbit than even even then. It's like, oh wow, you know. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of a blast from the past type of situation. That's so cute. Yeah. That's like that's like awesome just to be a part of something so huge though like yeah, cool. i can't wait to like get that what's coming you guys it's coming i'm, I'm gonna be a part of something historical i promise indeed yes uh, so what advice would you give uh up and coming actors and actresses um i would say number one get in class study your craft mm -hmm. um try not to let the grind define you and swing because it can be emotional because it's a lot of rejection yeah. And don't give yourself a deadline to where when you're supposed to make it because, yeah. you know, be in it for the love and keep your head down and, and try to enjoy the ride and remember 
why you got in. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, some people, the person beside you might land a roll and blow up, and you might be, you might be on the waiting block for an indefinite amount of time. It's, and it's okay. And it's okay. Right. 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 Um, that okay. Well, as far as you uh, uh, starting off though in the acting world, what what made you do that? Like going from singing to acting. Well, I just went to a, I just basically went to a class, an acting class, because I thought it would help me with my performance as a musician. Oh, wow. And I just kind of tagged along into a class with a friend of mine, and um, I ended up participating in the class, mm -hmm. and, and the teacher thought I had a kind of a natural instinct for it, thought mm -hmm. I was pretty good, and suggested that I maybe she pursue it and go read for this role, and that was power. So, so do you believe that without a class, you can't really make it like no not at all I, I okay. mean I, I, I believe I think classes hone the talent that you already have mm, I mean okay. instinctively people have a certain presence about them they have certain instincts and that's mm -hmm. what's really going to survive you and maintain you throughout right, right. your own imagination your instincts mm -hmm. and your confidence mm -hmm. uh, the class is just kind of a thing where it just kind of hones you, your craft and helps you know how to channel that and mm -hmm. get it better and practice it turn it off and on and right right things like that but I think I think acting, the acting game kind of chooses you. Some people have it, and, and some people yeah. may not necessarily have it. Right. You know, so see, so. I'm only asking because I see that was more of a personal question. Because yeah. I've been for years, people have been telling me like, "Oh, yeah. have you ever thought about acting?" Yeah, because you got a great, you got a bright personality, you have good energy, so that all feeds into becoming a good actress. So. You think so? Yeah. You just gotta, you know, you just hone it. But hone see, it, and study, then you know. uh, it's been, it's been. Uh, brought up again mm -hmm. so that's how I was just like do I really need to go to class for this you should go to class I, I mean I mean it helps because okay. because then you're focusing on the material you're focusing on certain things that you need to know because you're not going to just be able to because acting is an elusive craft mm -hmm. and they say it takes like 25 years for you to become an expert in it really it's always changing and you're always living um, your life and you're always changing and evolving right, as a person right oh so the way never you're, even thought about it like that yeah the way you're absorbing material subconsciously mm -hmm. and consciously and your outlook affects how you interpret material mm -hmm. so you should you do need to study it it does help studying it or doing self checks at least taking a a, a, a a block of classes starting off just to kind of you know, because you're a constant student of life. Mm -hmm. That's what makes you a better artist. So where did you go when you took your class? I studied with a lady named Carrie King, who okay. was acting coach in the Valley, who was really great. I studied with her for like eight years. Oh, wow. And um, she kind of taught me how to like hone my talent, how mm -hmm. to like, you know, breathing and different exercises and how to emotionally get your mind ready and, you know, how to interpret material, stuff like that. So when it comes down to you having to cry, how do you do that? Like, what do you uh, tap I mean, into? I, don't, I mean, it's a, it's a weird thing. It's kind of like a muscle. I think it's kind of like a memory muscle. But mm. um, I think if you can allow yourself to be vulnerable, mm. to let those emotions in and not lock them, not stop them, and really get into the material and what's happening and kind of put yourself in that space as if it were you. Right, right. The more you do it, then the easier that it, it becomes. Do you feel like... That kind of messes you up in a way. Um, I don't think. I don't think so. it really depends on how you're doing. If you're regurgitating the memory of your dead grandmother every time you need to cry, then yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, but if you're able to just be a conduit of the emotions and kind of empathize and get into the space of where the character lives, and you're vulnerable enough to accept that, mm -hmm. and you're open to yourself and you know your body, then I think it's a healthy thing. It's a perfect thing. It makes you bigger. Uh, it makes you a bigger person. Okay. You're able to empathize and. You know, right. And see things, and you're not afraid of the emotion. You go see, to it. You go to it, and you attack it. See, I I thought that uh, it just really like does the opposite effect. Like, or 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 you just become more hardened as a person. I would think you become more vulnerable as a person. Mm. Um, I would think, but I mean, some material does require you to give away a piece of yourself mm -hmm. you know you see a lot of actors who can't get out of role they say it took so much out of me or, mm -hmm. that's a real thing right um but i feel like those are people who are not afraid of it who go shy away i think those are the leaders and those are the people mm -hmm. that you know because it's always good to emotions are natural functions of the, of the, of the human experience mm -hmm. so it's up to us to let them pass through we don't have to dwell on them 
But, right. you know, you can let them pass through. I think that's a, that's a little healthy. Yeah. I feel like, what is this? It's okay. No. All is good. We're going to re and start again. Uh, so, you were in Fats Albert. Yes. How was that? That was fun. Um, you know, I got to hang out with my homies every day and act like right. we were back in grade school. Yes. So that was that was a lot of fun. So who were you uh, like like real homies with on set? Like we were all homies, but Keenan and I, who play Fat Albert, are like we're from the same part of the country. We're both from Georgia. So oh really? Yeah. So you knew him prior? Or, no, I didn't oh, know him just, prior. We kind of met on the set, and we kind of really became fast friends, and we still still very cool. So oh, that's um, nice. But all of us became fast friends all yeah. day because we were required to really act silly and lose our cool. Right, right. Not the cool shell we walk around and we had to act like little boys again. Right, so, right. How that like was, that was uh, interesting. That's kind of funny. Um, at that point, uh, was it like I don't know? Uh, does do you ever feel weird to have to like tap into that side? Because like from what I'm seeing, you're like real cool, you know. Yeah, like, it was a, you had to be a little bit. It was a little bit. You get a little bit self conscious, but that's uh oh, that's okay. what um, his mom calling me. That's what acting does. Though. Do you want to answer? It? No, no. Okay. That's what uh, acting does. It's about being losing that self consciousness, and that's mm -hmm. what classes do. Sometimes, okay. a lot of times in class, I make you get in front of the class and. Dance or right, yeah, I can't Just, do that. Once you lose the self consciousness, <laughs> then you can. I feel like I'm too cool. I be, I be doing that. Sometimes. But see, that's what a lot of people. That's, we all walk around on our cool shells. So yeah. When you're able to lose that, is when you become the character, you become a better artist. Because I know what I could be like without this shell that I got going on. So when you when you break that shell, that's where the actress lives. That's where the real money gonna come in. That's right. When I break the shell, that's damn, right. I need that's some right. classes. I'm going to talk to your girl. All right. <laughs> yeah. um, so it's, uh, going back to you being in Foul Albert, um, it was created by Bill Cosby. Yeah. Uh, how involved was he? In he was involved. I mean, you know, he, he, had, he originally had a whole entire cast and director that he, he scrapped and he, got, he came and got us. Was he um, physically there every time? Yeah, well, not every time, but he was on set. He spoke to us a couple times. Okay. He was at the premiere, and mm -hmm. you know, because that's his baby. That's really about him and his homies growing up in, right. in Philly. Right, right, right. So he's a very um, hands-on type of guy, for sure. Mm -hmm. um, okay, well, your experience with him, that was great, I'm assuming. Yeah, like it, was, how... it was awesome. It was like, it was like my uncle. He was okay, cool. Uncle Vibes. I played him. I played young Bill Cosby in that movie, so yeah, right, um, right, right. And he, was, uh, he was a good dude. I mean, you know, the stuff prior or during or after or now was uh, as shocking to me as it was to everybody else. Yeah. 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 Anyway, um, so let's say the people that you've worked with in the industry and your connection with them, um, like what would you say you've had a a good amount of like real connections that you've built through throughout the industry or like do you feel like some people are like fake and whatnot? Like how is it? I mean, overall my experience has been good. Mm -hmm. I mean everybody that I work with, um, do we all stay in contact? No, that's just like it's kinda like, you know, we don't do that. But mm -hmm. everybody that I work with, I mean ninety eight percent ninety nine percent of the people have been great. You know, okay. pretty cordial and no like weird they show experiences. Me respect. Uh, not personally, no. Really? Not, not to me. Yeah, I've been lucky. I've been yeah, lucky. you're yeah. truly blessed. Because yeah. I, I feel like I've heard some things, and I'm like, from yeah. that person? I thought that person it's was the coolest person. It's, it's definitely some things, but I mean, no one has ever really uh, disrespected me like that. So, mm -hmm. so far, so good. Okay. Uh, who was your, your influence uh, that you looked up to as far as acting? As you were, when you were younger, I mean, you know, as younger, I was just I wasn't really because I never really saw myself as an actor. As an actor, I think yeah. when I first saw Lorenz Tate, because mm. um, I feel like he kind of looked like me, and as far as, far as not look like me physically, <laughs> so it was a just black man, young black guy things. who was doing his thing. Right, and I was right. like, wow, this is this is he's dope. Like, yeah, it's like, right. It's like he's my age, right, or like someone right. I would be probably rolling with in school. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So it was, that was kind of like a cool thing to see when I saw young actors like that mm -hmm. pop out. I was mm -hmm. like, man, I mean, that'd be an awesome job. That'd be fun to do. 
You know what's like funny though, and I and I appreciate you for like being so like real cool in person, because there's a lot of people who say like, oh, or they just when they're watching a movie or a TV show and they're just like, damn, that man is so like, mm. and then in person it's just completely different. I just. Yeah. I, it's just funny to me that that it that it's like that that you can really tap into being that you know that sexy of a person and that that lady killer. Mm -hmm. But you know you're still a lady killer in person. Hey. 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 <laughs> but it, but it's like it's great like how people can turn it off and on and yeah. it's just like dude you really channeled in a whole entire different person. That's yeah. weird. Yeah. Like you, I don't trust it. Okay. That, that's what we get into, you don't trust me. I'm just... <laughs> you talking to me, you don't trust me? <laughs> because I'm like, are you pretending to be somebody else right now? And uh, I just do don't think? know. What do you think? I, so far, you know, you get an A. Okay. Not the plus, but an A. Oh, okay. I still got a little, you no know, Hopefully detective. I can earn the plus by the time we part By the time we dip, right. <laughs> but, um, okay. So, you've... Oh, you've been in... Dream Bros mm -hmm. with like Beyonce and Jennifer and them like how was that? It was cool, it was fun and they were super uh, super talented and of course, everybody yeah. was really in awe of each other and yeah you know it was a fun experience it was a great experience so. yes um, but like to be able to combine the two and sing and act all at the same time like yeah it makes sense. Yeah, you know? yeah, it was fun. It was, yeah. it was a perfect marriage. Right, right. Um, like, I just, I've always, I've always felt a way about musicals sometimes, but yeah. like, but that, that one? Yeah, it was a little different. Was like, yeah, yeah, I like it when it flows. I don't yeah. want you to just break, break out. out so yeah, I'm like, oh, yeah. that can we change. Everybody, everybody said that. Yeah, yeah but. But no, he, the, the director did a great job of mm -hmm. seamlessly. Mm-hmm. Orchestrating right, right. stuff into, into the mix. Because it, it was a classic. You're too cool. I already know that you weren't going to do no, like, okay, I'm not going to say any names. What? But no breakout musicals. Why you know that? How you, know? you think you know me, huh? Yeah. Ah. No, nah, I can read people pretty well, oh, so. Okay. <laughs> okay. He's Mr. Yeah. Cool, unless you're acting and you're lying. No, I think what you mean. Is that, what is that? Well, you're, you're acting. You're playing the cool guy right now. You, what think if this, you think this is an act? You think I'm really goofy or something? I'm waiting for the dorkiness <laughs> to come out. I'm just, I know he's in there somewhere. He's, he is in there, I mean, but I mean, this, this is pretty much how I am all the time. Mm -hmm. So you got a single. You want to talk about that? I do, that? I do. Uh, I call Kama Sutra. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's doing well. People really are digging it. And uh, I'm glad that people are gravitating to it. It's a good thing. It's a really great song. Thanks. We listened to it, and I mm -hmm. was like, you got to see the video too. The video's fun. Yes. The video's hilarious. We, uh, oh, that's it. Uh, no, but this song, you guys, like, it has a real cool vibe to it. Like, honestly, oh, it reminds me of that love from back in the day. Though. Mm. It brings, like, that's, when he, when he told it, said to bro, play it twice, I was just like, yeah, because I'm, I was feeling it. I was Word. like, like you know, when you have to, when you listen to something, but you just have to listen to it again, so you yeah. can like really dissect it. Yeah. I was just like, and you know, it's this how crying really, it's helping getting into the zone. But I was just like, okay, I'm, I'm gonna have to listen to this again when I'm like in the tub with the with the. Okay, then, going set on. it then, set it then. Come on, I survive. Like I'm telling you, it's a vibe. When survive. I'm saying so, it's a vibe, it's a vibe. You gotta listen. You gotta support. You gotta go so. buy. You gotta. Thank you very much. Of course, of course. Like, I just I can't wait for. Uh, wait, are you dropping an album soon? Like. Yeah. Uh, when does that happen? Love Episodic Two. Mm -hmm. uh, it'll be out. It'll be out late summer, early fall, right now. It's okay. It's slated for. We don't have a specific date yeah because we're still riding the Kama Sutra wave uh, I like but, how you uh, did that. but it's coming though. okay cool yeah. um, so like when it comes down to you and creating your music and whatnot what's your musical process um I think I kind of let the outside world influence me where I'm at mm -hmm. personally or what people around me are going through mm -hmm. um, um, and then you know I'm, I'm always around different producers and, and cats who have uh, 
sounds and it kind of if I have a phrase or a concept or a vibe once I sit down and write I kind of connect the dots okay okay um, and like does it normally take you a long time to complete it um, the actual process is pretty fast once I have the vibe locked in it comes pretty fast as okay. far as, but I don't rush as far as when that happens mm -hmm. so the actual process of doing it is fast the actual process of getting to the next time I'm going to do it may vary mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I might write a song here and then maybe write a song a month later or maybe a week later, really depends on Right, right, right. Um, and uh, who, like, are you, who would you want to just, like, today, like, any of the hot new artists today to work with? Like, who would you choose? Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm always down to work with whoever want to work with me. But, mm. uh, like I say, for real, so I love Rafael Sadiq. I love... Oh, God, yeah, I forgot about that. Oh. So, I don't know why I forgot about. I love me some yeah. Rafael His creations are so dope. Super. Oh my goodness, yes, yeah. Um, I have uh, some rapid fire questions that I would like to ask you. Okay. So if you could go forward ten years, go back ten years, what would you do? I'll probably go back. Cause you need more time. I'm not you need more time. <laughs> I'll go back. Would you change anything? Um, I don't know because I'm kind of hesitant. I don't think so because I feel like whatever God set in front of me is what I was supposed That's to encounter and endure. So mm -hmm. I, wouldn't probably, I wouldn't want to mess with mm -hmm. whatever his plan is for me. Okay. If you could do uh, a music project with Jermaine Dupree or Babyface, who would it be? Probably I don't know why, I just think he was going to say that. Why? Um, just because our genres are so, our vibes are in sync, I think. Um, yeah, just from a songwriting standpoint, I think it'd be a great experience. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, okay. And um, let's see, what was the biggest uh, movement in your career, in your opinion? Movement? Mm -hmm. What do you mean by movement? Like, what was the biggest just move that you made in general? Like, I think the biggest move was moving to Los Angeles. Mm. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Open up so many opportunities. Yeah. 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 Oh my gosh. Okay. Well. Lastly. Okay. I know that uh, you worked with alongside uh, Chadwick. Yeah. How? How? For one, how was that? It was great. I mean, it was the movie up, yeah. Get Up, right? Get On Up, yeah. Yeah. He's great. I mean, he's uh, he's from South Carolina, too, so we had oh, a lot wow. of connection there. He's a yeah. hard worker, humble dude. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> he's a real uh, straight shooter, but he just has a great work ethic. You know, he's really yeah. focused. He's really focused, you know, so uh, mm -hmm. that's what I really took away from yeah. being around him. Yeah. I mean, how was that for you, just hearing his passing? It was as shocking as anybody else. It was out of the blue. It was, yeah. It was kind of explain um, why he had, had lost so much weight and everything. And mm. I, didn't really, I thought it was he was just, just under a lot of stress because of the grind of Hollywood. Right, right, of right, right. Um, <clears throat> but it's just an amazing uh, story of, uh, you know, willpower and strength and mm -hmm. selflessness, I think. Right, so, right. So, so it's amazing. It was an honor to get a chance to work with him. You are entirely blessed because I would I I just was just like he's for him to like be uh, uh, to chop for him mm -hmm. to do, for him to embrace that and then to brace the character uh, in in get on up I was just like that's like two completely like different vibes you know oh yeah and like all the other things that he's done but I was just like this man like he's really talented you mm -hmm. know and. Uh, it's just amazing to see that, you know, Indeed. and pick up, you Absolutely. know, some things. But I mean, you're very talented as well. Thank you. I'm sorry. Hold on. Let me give my praise on to you because you're the one that. in the seat on today. I appreciate you. And I appreciate you yeah, yeah. for coming through. Thanks for having me. Appreciate for it. For blessing the gallery with your presence. Well, thank you for having me. It's been I, real. It's been real. It's been really real. It's been really red on the Red Dot series. 15 minutes uh, at the Red Dot. You guys, you thank did. you so much for tuning in on today as we have the amazing Keith in the building.
You guys have a good rest of your day, Peace. evening, or whatever it is. Until next time. Holla.